Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I recorded yet another Bulgarian workout for you guys. Like I said, doing six of these every week on camera, it's not bad. And, you know, I don't take my seventh day that seriously. I try to come in and hit my daily minimum on squats and all that, uh, which I'll do tomorrow. And, you know, my other goofing off stuff, some uh, barbell complexes and things like that. But I don't take it that serious. Uh, today, though, I felt strong. Because yesterday I hit that... Uh, pretty good weight and it was super fast super fast uh on that squat on um, five hours of sleep well i got a good night's sleep last night and i'm like i know i'm stronger let me just come in and do this it's, these warm-ups are light they are light so i went up 10 pounds i went up and did 455 like i said i feel like i could probably grind 500 is an absolute max right now if i had to uh, so I think a 10 pound jump was warranted and it turned out I was right. It was not that hard, not that hard, uh, which you guys will see here in a minute. And I put it up separately earlier today. So you guys will see it again here. Now on a side note, uh, you know, there are people in the comments the last few days talking about Walmart workout clothing and they want, they make a joke about the fact that I, <laughs> I train in cheap clothes. I'm sitting here in a $4,000 home gym that I just paid for with my own money. I've got a $4,000 home gym. All right, I put my money in things that matter. Do you guys honestly think some polyester or cotton by different companies really makes any difference in your workout? If you do, you're a moron. You're a moron. Put your money where it counts. Again, that's a poverty mindset people have of sp spending money on stupid stuff instead of putting the money into investments that are actually going to see a return on. It's the difference between... Um, People who grow up poor and people who grow up with money seem to know the difference between that. Other than when you're trying to just make appearances. Well, I think I make enough of an appearance with all the road plates. Yeah, I, I think that shows enough uh, quality that we're good. Now, there was that squat. Look at that. Look at that. 455. And it was easy. It was a sub two seconds uh, concentric rep. I felt the same way on bench. I'm like, let me step my bench press up. Let's step the bench press up today. So I did. I did my little ramp ups here. As you guys can see, we did some ramping. Um, and it was all around a good day. Good day. Now we can talk about some of the bench pressing later. And I haven't even decided what I'm going to do for other stuff. I, I kind of stopped today after I hit the squat good. This is a bench PR on camera, but I have done 325 once in the gym. But only one time I haven't gone above 315 since that day and that was one of those where I took uh, early on in this training when I started benching again I took some time off and you know like a day off completely from training and came in fresh and I hit a 325 bench right but I bench six days a week right now I, I had been doing at least a press of some type but now I'm benching six days a week and overhead pressing three days a week and I've been throwing a little bit of dips in for my volume stuff later you know well, my idea of volume, doing tri triples is my idea of volume. That's what I mean by volume. If I do several sets of three, that's that's volume. So let's not confuse that with bodybuilder volume. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I do that a lot. So I'm always in a slightly fatigued state. But yeah, I got the 325. Uh, so we'll see this last ramp up at 265, which is obviously easy. But I get the 325. And you guys have noticed I am out a hair on the grip. Um, again, I'm closer to more efficient leverages there, so it should be easier to get stronger. And I think I think we're going to see this continue to increase. And I mean, 315 became my new baseline this week because I think I did it pretty much Monday through Friday. And then Saturday, I'm like, let me just bump it another five. I feel good. I feel strong. Uh, you know, the warm ups felt good, so I might as well. Let me just go for it. And I did. And it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I mean, it wasn't super fast. You can tell we're dealing with RPE 9 plus at this point. You know, could I do a double with it? Probably. Probably do two reps with this. They wouldn't be pretty. Uh, it means this isn't my true max, but it's heavy enough. And that's the other thing people need to remember when it comes to strength gains. Uh, there have been, this has been looked at and by researchers looking at athletes. Going above RPE 9 doesn't really give you strength, meaning an absolute max versus getting within 10% of an absolute max doesn't seem to cause any additional strength gain because you're pretty well still at uh, the close to the most you can do. You're still hitting those upper threshold fibers and giving them some adaptative stress. 
All right, overhead press. I was like, you know what? I might try to increase my overhead press today. Let's just do this, right? I mean, the bench was up, the squat was up. I'm like, maybe I'll get instead of 225, if I try to do a piece that I can go put some uh, micro plates on and go 227 and a half. No, oh, didn't happen. I did this 155. I came in at 205, which is still my daily minimum. And I'm like, I'm done. That felt hard, felt heavy. I didn't even bother to hold the lockout. I just pressed it and brought it back down. Um, it was enough. I'm like, <laughs> it's enough. You know, I've done 225 twice this week. One of them with a the belt knot clamped. So it was pretty much beltless. Uh, that was it. I did really good on the other two lifts. You know, I'm like I did good on the other lifts. I progressed. I just feel done. Um, just feel fatigued. I'm like, that's it for the day. Those were, were easy, especially that squat. I mean, it wasn't even an all-out squat, even though I bumped it up 10 pounds. But I just got to the press, and I'm like, that's, that's all I have. And you know what? I've done 225 twice this week. Uh, that's a pretty good run of it. 205, we're within 10%. Maybe next week we'll be able to increase it, you know, just that micro-loading. So the other thing, let's look at this bench here. You guys are going to notice something. I had to slow this down frame by frame because that's the beauty of having editing software and recording yourself. And since I'm recording the overwhelming majority of my training now, uh, it lets me be able to analyze this stuff. Uh, and it's really funny to me that people haven't actually analyzed my squat. The people who come in and don't like my squat form, they, they really need to slow it down frame by frame and actually look at the biomechanics they realize that what they're saying isn't even actually true. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, I don't need to worry about that. I can do some of that later. All right, the bench. If you look at it here, watch when I come up. Left side seems to almost dip. It doesn't dip. Why is that important? Because when I slow it down frame by frame, I can see that, first of all, it wouldn't be red lighted in a powerlifting meet. That's important. That's the other thing, guys. A lot of you guys out there who've never done any strength sport honestly think that your lifts are good that you know if you just showed up at some sort of competition that your whatever your 300 bench your 450 squat whatever it is uh would be accepted and the reality is a lot of them wouldn't be and there's a lot of youtubers out there who people would say oh this guy he lifts more than you then i watch and i'm like yeah but none of it's meat legal so i mean if we're going to compare strength standards is he really because if i can do a stricter version if he's forced to do the strict version i do he can't lift what i lift and I'm not the strongest guy out there, but just using that as an example, you got to keep that in mind. That up and down of the bar ends you in, in any sort of strength sport. If the bar dips an inch on one end at any point during the concentric rep, uh, the judges are going to red light you. That's against the rules. It means you weren't strong enough to lift it. You had to shift your body and grind. But it didn't come to, it didn't actually dip, but it did come to a complete stop. Now, that's stuff we can look at because, you know, let's talk about that video the other day that I did even with the Athlete X. Compensatory strength. Notice my weak side stops. My left side. Now, I've torn my right bicep and I have tissue loss in my, or my left bicep is my left, I'm sorry. Uh, my left bicep, which is the weak side there, has, has had some trauma to it. Two different instances in a short period of time of different types of trauma to it. Uh, I do not have a complete bicep. Now, is that affecting my tricep strength? Is it affecting maybe the fact maybe I just fight over my right arm? Uh, possibly, but my left side comes to a stop near the lockout and my right side keeps going up. So the left is it's actually really limiting my strength. Normally we talk about compensatory strength allowing you to lift more. In this case, I'm probably lifting less because if one side rises higher than the other, usually what happens when one side slows, people tend to shift and use compensatory strength, right? They'll shift under the other side so they can get a better leverage and lift it. In this case, that's not what's happening. My right is continuing to go up, putting even more weight, because if you take a bar and it tilts to one side, the side that's down has a little more weight on it. My left side is being forced to take the heavier weight. My left side is my weaker side. Do you see it about midway up? So what's happening there, uh, my left side is absolutely limiting my absolute strength. Um, now, do I, I'm not sure what to do about that because I don't know, is it a purely a tricep strength issue? Is it possibly my left bicep not being able to give enough stability? Maybe it's weaker, so I just need strong to build my biceps up more stronger, particularly my left one. 
uh, that might be the case. You know, I think that might make me a better bencher because if it's a stability issue, uh, I can fix that with my bicep. If it's the left tricep just being weaker, that's going to be fixed the way my bench is going because my left side's being forced to work harder. So either way, I'm good. But that's the beauty of being able to video yourself. You can learn a lot. All right, guys. So I hope this has been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.